personal finance practice problem using OneNote. Stock price calculation, assuming constant dividends and no growth. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along. We're in the icon left-hand side, practice problems tab, and the 12 to 10 stock price calculation, assuming constant dividends and no growth tab. Also, take a look at the immersive reader tool, practice problems, typically in the text area too, with the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages, either listened to or read in them. We're thinking about investment strategies in stocks, stocks representing an ownership interest in a corporation, corporations being separate legal entities where the ownership interest is broken out into standardized units of shares or stock. We're also typically thinking about publicly traded companies, those traded on public exchanges, making them more transparent, more accessible, allowing us to get to things such as their financial statements to make investment type decisions also keep distinct in your mind your investment strategies you might use for investing in stocks versus investing using tools like mutual funds and etfs we're focusing here more on investing in uh, the individual stocks or so we're handle analyzing then individual companies as you're investing say in individual stocks you've got to think about how they fit or align with your overall portfolio so we're going to be looking at then valuing how can we value in essence the price of the stock how can we guess or estimate what the value of the stock is possibly then being able to compare that to what the market price is what the price is determined by supply and demand by the market to see if it's under or overvalued to help us out with our investment strategies we want to use a concept oftentimes that's similar to what we use for investment in fixed income such as bonds that being we would like to kind of value in the future cash flow streams take a present value of the future cash flow streams and that can help us to determine what the value of the investment would be that's straightforward to do in essence with bonds because with a bond we have two standard investment flows that being that we're going to have the interest which is typically semi-annual going out into the future and then we've got the maturity date which is known because it's in the bond and then we're going to have that amount that we're going to get back basically the principal at the end of the bond so we can present value using the market rate and that's kind of the c confusing component there to choose what rate would be the appropriate rate but we can discount it back uh, to the future and that can help us to determine what the price is when we're thinking about the common stock it's more difficult because we we have two formats of income that we are expecting to get in terms of a return on the stocks one would be the return in the form of dividends the company giving us dividends meaning they're going to generate revenue and they're going to give us those revenues similar to a draw when you're talking about a partnership or a sole proprietorship but in a partnership or sole proprietorship the partners can take different draws so in a corporation, all the stocks have to be the same. Therefore, the partner or the stockholder does not determine directly what the dividend will be. That's going to be determined by the board of directors and management. But that would be the return of the, of the revenue of the company in the form of a dividend distribution. And then the other way would be that they invest in the company. They grow the company. And in so doing, that should be reflected in the stock price. So we've got these two kind of things uh, that are going on. We also want to think about the kind of stock that we're investing in when we're using this kind of strategy. So it's easier to use this kind of strategy if you're thinking about, and here we are thinking about well-established companies. So a, a company will typically have kind of a, a, an arc in their, in their growth, right? So it's going to look something like this if they, if they survive all the way through, right? So we're going to say when they're when they're down here, they're in the growth area, they're probably not going to be giving much dividends because they're reinvesting in the company. And and that means that their stock price might go up. So you can think about Apple when it was growing. And then at this point in time up here, now they've they've been well established. They don't need to make new plants. You can think of like Apple now that's pretty well established. Or you can think of like a utility company, for example, all the plants are built. The phone company, for example, all the phone lines are out there. They don't need to build more phone lines and whatnot, but you would expect that they're going to march along pretty consistent in their revenue, and therefore they're going to give most of that revenue back in the form of dividends. 
So if we're gonna analyze the future cash flow streams, that's kind of the easiest way to do it. We're gonna say here that we're looking at a company that doesn't have a lot of growth because they're at the peak of their growth spurt here and they're just well-established like utility companies now, for example. Uh, but we expect them to keep marching along with a standard kind of dividend. Now you could use the same strategy for other kind of companies as well, but it gets a little bit more uh, complex and we'll talk about that in future presentations. So that's gonna be the, the assumption we're gonna make here. We're looking at common stock uh, value, no growth. So they're, they're giving common stock, standard stocks. Now remember that in your investment strategy, typically people that are like in retirement, for example, are gonna want a standard dividend kind of stock oftentimes. So these are often more stable kind of stocks and when you're, when you're younger investing for retirement or have a long time horizon, then you're probably a more balanced portfolio. You've got more stocks that, that are down here somewhere looking for the, that maximizing of the growth, for example, but also having diversification. Okay, but here we're looking at, at those established like utility kind of companies and we're gonna value them. Now, that means that, uh, that uh, we're gonna value the dividends that are going out into the future we're gonna assume that the dividends are $15 and they're just gonna be uh, plan to keep this dividend for some time into the future. We're gonna say that that's gonna be standard. So utility company, they're just gonna crank out the dividend and that we don't expect them to grow that much. We just expect them to march along doing what they're doing and giving that dividend out into the future. So it would be kind of like looking at a bond and valuing just like the interest payments instead of out and not having to deal with the principal at the end, except that the interest payments have a maturity date. Whereas here, the dividends could in theory go out forever. However, as we'll see those payments out into the future at some point will be somewhat small in relation to the overall price. So we can use it kind of this method. So required rate of return for the common stockholder, we're gonna say is 12. That's the market rate. That's what we think we can get on say similar risk investments, for example. So that's the rate that we need to clear in essence in order to be invested in the stock. So what would the price be? The easy calculation, we could say it's just gonna be $15 and then we're gonna divide it by the 12% and then we get the 125. So that's easy to calculate, might not be as satisfying to kind of understand. There's the 125. And so we'll, we'll, we'll analyze it a little bit more. We can also think, okay, well, if the price is 125 and my required rate of return, let's say the price that we found was 125 and I need a required rate of return of 12. And we think that this is just a dividend stock that's gonna go out in the future, not a whole lot of growth. Then we can of, of course calculate the, the dividend that we would expect them to have 125 divided by 0.12. I'm sorry, times 0 0.12, 125 times 0 0.12 would be the 15. Okay, let's see if we can understand that a little bit better. We could say, okay, well, I could think of this as an annuity. It, remember when we price a bond, we usually price a bond by taking the present value of the interest, and then we take the present value of the maturity amount. Now, in this case, we don't have a maturity amount, so it's just the present value of the annuity. So we could do an annuity calculation. This is what it looks like in Excel. We do do this in Excel if you wanna take a look at it. And we could say, okay, it's the present value of the rate. That's gonna be our, our discount rate, the 12%. The number of periods, we don't know that because there's no maturity date here. But we're expecting that 15% to go on for some time into the future. So we'll just, it, in, in essence, it could go on to infinity in theory, but we'll just pick a large number like 100. So that's way out you know, into the future. And then comma, uh, the number, the, the payment then is gonna be that $15 of the dividend. So if we look at an annuity for 100 years, right, at the $15 dividend, that's gonna get us to that 125 that we've, that we've got to here. So that's how we're kind of discounting the stream. You can also think about it this way. We could say, okay, well, what if we mapped this out as future cash flows that we're expecting from, uh, from the company? And you can also do this if you expect the dividends to change over time. You could allow for that changes by just mapping out each year and say, what would the dividends be per year? And then discount it just basically on a year by year basis. So we could say, okay, let's take this out, you know, 15 years, they're gonna be $15 dividend per year. If I discount that, that here's the first one. If I discount that $15, uh, back one year at 12% using a present value of one formula. In other words, it would be the rate 12% number of periods. This time is just one because we're taking that 15 one period back to the present comma comma because there's no payment. It's not an annuity, but 
just a present value of one, future value would be then the 15. Discounting that 15 back at 12% one year would give us the 13, uh, 39 about. If we discount year two, uh, $15 two years back at 12%, we get the 11, uh, 95 and so on and so forth. And you can see that as we go out into the future, that 15, of course, into the future, because of the time value of money is gonna get smaller and smaller. And when we get way out here, close to the to the 100 year frame, you can see that the 15s are getting small to the point that remember, we said this could go out kind of indefinitely. But now this number is fairly small, it has a fairly small impact on the price. And so that's why when I use 100 years, we can we can basically kind of get get to a price. If I sum all these up, then we get to that 125 again. So you've got to be you got to be a little bit careful with with some of these annuities, depending on how big the dividend is, because, if you know, but that's going to be the general idea. So we can still use that valuation method that we would have in a bond, even though we don't have a set terms and try to attempt to get that that same method. Now in Excel, you might do the same method this way, put the periods this way, put the headers up top. I highly recommend practicing these things in Excel because you wanna practice your tables, you wanna practice the present value calculations, and you wanna see the difference between a table like this, where you've got the advantage of, of being able to put your headers and having more space on the headers. Whereas here you got your headers up top. So, so if you want a long header, you gotta have multiple cells or you gotta wrap the cells or something but you can copy the information down a lot more easily by just double clicking, for example, on the fill handle, and you can copy the present value calculation down more easily. So now we're just mirroring this calculation here, the 15 being present valued one year back at the 12% gives us the 13, uh, 39 and so on and so forth. And we do the same calculations thusly. So we, we would then get after a hundred years, 1,500 in dividends, $15 a year for 100 years. But after we discount it, there's only 125. Now, also just realize that th that discount concept is a little bit confusing because we discounted it not at the interest rate here. This isn't, I mean, this isn't like inflation. This is the rate that we think we can get on other investments. This is kind of like the hurdle rate, if you would think about it in terms of like investing in. Uh, capital investment calculations if you've done that kind of thought process. So in other words, you might say, let's let's look at the cash flows, including the price, meaning if I put the $125 up front and I present value that, it would be at the 125. And then if I took the 15s all the way through and added that up, it would get to zero. Meaning, and the reason I point that out is because when you do a hurdle rate, hurdle rate calculation, this would be the full cash flow, right? We put the cash flow of 125 up front, which is equal to 125 at year zero. Then we discount all of the all of the uh, years going forward and it comes out to zero. That doesn't mean that we didn't make a profit. That means that we cleared the hurdle rate. That means that we cleared if it's over a zero, we, we got a 12% return, right? If it was exactly zero, we got a 12% return. If it was higher than zero, then we would have got something higher than a 12% return. So that would mean that we would want to invest in it because we think that our comparative investment would be a 12% uh, return. So in future presentations, we'll, we'll add a little complexity and say, well, what if we think the stock price is gonna grow too and not just be valuing it based on the future dividends? In that case, we could try to figure what the dividends will be at some point into the future, thinking about it as cash flow way out into the future, for example, or we could try to take into consideration the growth and the value of the stocks and try to estimate that as well.